I live in Houston and a couple months ago, we recently had that winter storm where we lost water for literally two weeks and electricity as well. And I was like, never again, especially living in Houston where we have hurricanes and we have a whole bunch of things that make our electricity a little bit less reliable than it should be in the energy capital of, of the United States. So after doing some research, uh, what I decided to do was pull the trigger and buy this Duramax XP5500HX. I thought that was gonna be the hard part and someone, as someone who has never had a generator before or been around a person who uses a generator, I thought that the hard part would be maintenance and oil changes and things like that. It turns out that I have encountered many more problems very early on in this process than I imagined and that I anticipated. The first thing was this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cuss you for a second, this goddamn shipping brace. This shipping brace was included like something like this, okay, when I got it. Now, I was having a very hard time unscrewing it. A very, very, very hard time unscrewing it. And so I looked it up and I've read the instructions. Like I, I you know, try to follow the, the path of least resistance. And normally that is the, the instruction booklet. And normally that is, uh, you know, the manufacturer's how-to video. Well, in this video, basically the guy is just smiling and he uses the, the uh, included equipment, which for the record are these two little wrenches here and he takes them off with ease there's no problem whatsoever for the life of me i could not get the bolts which look like these i could not get these off they were incredibly tight and then i went on the internet and i was like okay obviously there's wd-40 i tried wd-40 didn't work i tried heat people have been saying heat okay i tried that didn't work um, and any time that I thought that I was actually loosening it, what I was doing was bending the wrench itself. So this guy has been sitting in my living room for about a week now because I could not get this off with the equipment that I had and I just couldn't make it to, to Lowe's or Home Depot because I was working. So I know that I cannot be the only one with this problem. And so I wanted to, to very simply tell you what you need. And I also want to tell you some other mistakes that I'm making as I go through it. So that if you're having problems with this product as well, then here's, here's some um, ways around that. So here's what you need instead. How I wish, how I wish they would have included this guy and not, not something like this. Because you don't need at least so far i don't need all of these sizes of whatever this is a wrench okay what i really needed was this this specifically okay now let's look at it 10 millimeters okay now of course of course that when i went to lowe's i i thought i i imagined that they would have like a wall of wrenches and i could just pick the one that i need no of course not so i had to buy a goddamn set when I only needed one, okay? When I had this and I was able to put it on the screw, no problem, no problem at all. I had uh, the 13 on the bottom around uh, like a piece like this. And then I had this guy, this circle around the top. And then I was able to loosen it as expected. So again, why they don't have this guy with this instead of these, I, I don't understand because that screw was on far too tight, far too tight. That, that bolt needs to be a lot less tight when they ship it. And then they also, I would prefer that they include the tool that you actually need to undo that at such a, a strong tightness of the bolt. Here's the other thing that I have encountered thus far. And I would not be surprised if I encounter more. This guy, this this bar here, is I guess the axle. Again, I'm new to this thing. I I don't even know what an axle is. Okay, um, 
Now I watched the video, right? The video says, and I watched it carefully. Basically the side that has the long piece of metal here, as opposed to that side on the video, he does this. Okay. Now I screwed it on. I screwed that bolt on and this bracket as well. And then I went to go put the wheels on. There's a problem. There's a problem here <laughs> because the wheel doesn't go on. If I put it on right here like this, right? You can see, you can see there's a problem. So I was like, okay, okay, it's okay. I can do this. I can deal with this. So I was like, I'll just loosen the bolts and then I'll slide the, the, um, pipe here then I forgot oh wait this is solder to it so I can't do that so then I had to unscrew all the bolts again and now I'm going to flip it like this and hopefully that will work because this like lip here is exposed and the lip here is also exposed so that's going to be the next thing I hope it's the last thing let's find out as a newbie, I should have known better and I should have tightened these guys by hand first to make sure that the wheels fit correctly. Now that I have it in this way, where the soldered connected part here is on, I don't know how to explain, like the right side, I guess, and how the, the uh, unattached bracket is here, I was able to put the wheel on and now there is uh, some extra bit of it hanging off and it's hard to tell but there is a hole there and that's where that pin is gonna go so this way <laughs> worked better again i should not have tightened the bolts all the way thinking okay i got this now because i didn't in the included wheel kit it comes with these feet i guess you could say and they have two bolts that are um, connected, they're like soldered in. And I assume they're gonna go in these two holes right here. And I do have to kind of uh, pu push it a little bit this way to make sure that they fit correctly or actually make it in. Uh, that one I didn't have to do. And then again, I'm gonna assume uh, that I'm gonna use these guys to lock that down. On the video on YouTube, this company, when they have their setup video, their instructions for doing the wheels are a little bit different. Now, this is going to be a total newbie thing because I am a newbie. I don't know anything. I will be the first to admit I know pretty much nothing when it comes to these kinds of things and like handiwork. I'm, I'm learning, but I'm still, in the, I'm still a beginner. On the YouTube video, it does not include any information about the washers. It's just like install the wheels on the axle. I'm like, okay. And so I almost put in the pin, but I didn't, thankfully. I went back to this manual and I wanted to make sure, okay, how do they say that they, how to do it in here? And this is what they say. They put say to put a, a washer on the axle, then put on the wheel, then put another washer, then put on the pin. The YouTube video does not say that. And I'm sure if you are an experienced person, you probably already know this. But again, as a person who's new to this, uh, I didn't know what to do with the washers. So always make sure that you're following the manual as well as the video as like a, a, a hint or like a supplement. The more I do this process and, and suffer through this experience, the more I think that the man in the video putting together that generator for the, the how-to video simply has superhuman strength. That would make a lot of sense because the instructions say to, to like basically put the pin in here and then bend it. That is very hard to do with just your fingers, but in the video, the man does it. I don't, I don't know how he does that. Okay, I, I'm not the most strong person. I'm not weak, but I'm not that strong either. And I, I can't do that with my fingers. So here's the solution to this okay just like a grippy thing again 
this is not an educational video for how to to work stuff i don't know what i'm doing okay so so with this with some pliers you're very easily able to bend it but if you think you're going to do it with your fingers like that man it, that's not going to happen unless you have like the super serum or something no so i just went ahead and again i used just some 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 of these, these guys okay um blanking on the name here um, and i just held them both together and then twisted them to the side so that way it bends the pin something worth noting that's not noted in either the manual or the youtube video is that in the wheel kit i'm pretty sure there are two yeah there's definitely two different size bolts okay you have this one or screw i don't know i don't know i'm learning uh this and, and the other one that I have right here is longer than the one I used for the, the feet, okay? So I intentionally used the smaller one on the feet and on the axle as well, because I was like, okay, there's low clearance here, especially on that one. And I was figuring, okay, well, maybe there's a reason. There's my cat. Maybe there's a reason why we need the longer one so i did not use a longer one it didn't say that it doesn't say it in the video or in the manual but i was like okay i'll hold the the later ones uh the longer ones for later sure glad i did because this is the handle this is one of the handles and what's going to happen is i'm going to take it like this right and then you see there is the hole and then there's like a like a not necessarily a pin but an area that sticks out there so what's gonna happen is I'm gonna drop this down on here like this, okay? And then I'm gonna line up the holes and then I'm gonna put the screw in there. But it needs to be long enough to go through this. This short one that you're gonna use on the feet and on the wheels is not, I don't think it's gonna be long enough for, for the handle. So keep the long one for the handle. So here's what it looks like when it's done. You can see that and let's pull it down so you can see and it does say it does specifically say not to tighten these this um okay nut and bolt there too tight because you do need to be able to move it so you don't want it to be super tight uh, but i hate a loose handle <laughs> uh, and even now it is still pretty loose and um Above the engine, you'll see kind of tucked in there is a funnel and something else and I'm not quite sure what it is. And I will take it out the side like this, maybe, okay. And then I think there's a zip tie. And I'm gonna have to cut, yeah, I'm gonna have to cut that zip tie to get that out. I cut the zip tie on the other end, but there's some like levers and pulleys. There's some levers and pulleys over there um, so I went around to the other side and I'm going to pull that out. I think it might be for the propane. Yeah, it looks like for the propane tank. The next part is connecting the battery. The positive end is already attached to the battery, but for shipping purposes, the negative side is not connected. So for this rubber cover is a little like hook there. And what we're going to do is, I guess, I think I'm gonna unscrew this bolt, slide it in. Let's see how this is. Yeah, so this one is like they undid the, the screw or before they put in the screw, they simply put that positive on there. So I'm gonna unscrew this one, slide that in and then put the screw on top and then screw it in. Now, this includes the generator, included this as a tool. At first, I'm like, well, that's dumb. It doesn't fit, it's too big. It's too big for this screw, right? And I was, I was gonna make a stupid comment, but it is a reversible one. So you can just slide it out. It's hard to do with one hand. You can slide it out in the, maybe, there we go. Then on the other side is the Phillips and the Phillips head does fit in there. Um, so if you're like, what the hell? Um, just take it out, just take it out and reverse it. Flip it and reverse it, okay? So, 
Righty tidy. Lefty Lucy. Oh no. Oh no. This isn't fake. I really I really did think this was gonna be easy. Righty tidy. Lefty Lucy, right? I've already explained explained. I am not an expert, that's for sure. But if we look at these two screwdrivers, which are having a hard time focusing, you can see that this one that they give us is kind of like not pointy. This one is pointy. I was having a really hard time with the included one in this screw, which I mean, it should be easy, right? A screw is like super, that's basic, that's basic. But with uh, like a regular screwdriver, that was easy. So if you get frustrated with this POS thing right here, just use your own screwdriver uh, and it should work. Something to keep in mind before you put in the screw is that this is the top, right? So you need to open it up and do it from this side. Don't do it from the bottom because if you do it like that, it won't be able to cover it. You need to be able to cover the terminal with this piece of rubber so it needs to go like that. So I've taken the screw off. What I'm gonna do now is put, ooh, that's a good camera angle. I'm gonna put the screw in here, okay? And then I'm gonna put it through here, put the nut on the other side and then tighten it. So I was pretty much able to tighten it by hand and then I just finished it off with Where's my camera? There's my camera. The real screwdriver. And so now there's this rubber thing on top, which is going to protect that terminal, hopefully, hopefully, yeah. And now the battery is connected. The last step in the manual, at least for now in the setup, is oil. I don't really wanna do that at the moment because I'm gonna put this in storage. I just wanted to set it up to put it in my shed. Those are all of the problems I encountered before I even started this thing. Uh, so that being said, maybe once hurricane season comes or we're supposed to have some inclement weather, then I'll test it out. But for now, I don't really have a desire to test it out because again, I feel like as a, a beginner, the upkeep and the whole oil situation and gas is going to be a little bit more complicated. But if you're interested in the panel here, uh, again, I have the dual fuel XP5500 XHX, okay, um, and dual fuel, as you probably know from doing your research, has the gasoline or propane, it tells you here, it does have the propane inlet, and it did come with that cord. So in case you're wondering, again, I, I don't know how to do that exactly yet, I'm still learning, but it does come with the cable. It does have an electric start, which is a, a, a main selling point for me. Uh, it has LEDs to let you know if the oil is low and it, if it's charging. Again, that's important for me as a newbie because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying to learn, right? A huge thing, a huge thing that is not really standard on a lot of the generators that I was looking at is the CO2 de detector. Obviously, tons of people die from carbon monoxide poisoning all the time. And that's especially true when it comes time for emergency situations. In Harris County, where Houston is located, we had a lot of people die, and in Texas in general, we had a lot of people die from carbon monoxide poisoning because they had their generators too close to their house, or they were running them in their house, or they were running them in their garage. And that is very dangerous. So. I would highly recommend, again, I don't know, I don't know anything, but what I do know is that I wanted something with a CO2 uh, monitor in it because I, I did not want to be a victim of that. You see a lot, uh, I think it's called a twist lock power cord here. You see a regular outlet here and it does have a reset. And we have here power boost technology. I'm not really sure what that is about. And maybe, I don't, I also haven't read the manual about this, but in, uh, a breaker and then a USB outlet. That's pretty neat. And this is pretty solid. I mean, that's pretty neat, right? So it should be pretty waterproof. 
that's gonna be important with the hurricanes. So, um, haven't used this yet. I would rate the setup as, uh, I'm a teacher, so I would be pretty harsh here. I would say like a D or more. Um, this was super hard, super unfriendly. Uh, just because it didn't really, the manual wasn't great, the video wasn't great. There was a lot of problems that I encountered.